Welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Who's Next. Today we're going to be going up to Hastings, Michigan, where we find 10-year-old quarter midget driver Race Bible. Race, how are you doing tonight? Good, how are you? I'm doing great, man. I see a lot of hardware behind you there. That's pretty cool. So my, my first question that I want to know is what made you decide that you wanted to be a race car driver? I wanted to start racing when my when I heard that my grandpa used to race. I started in quarter midgets. I mean, I started with a go kart, and now I'm in quarter midgets. So, all right. Well, very cool. So I've got to presume that with a name like Race. I'm not sure that you had a whole other lot of options. I've never heard of a shortstop or a pitcher being called race. And as we talked a little bit before we started to run the show, I think that name is so cool. So share with the, uh, with the viewers where you got that name at. I believe I got that my name from my grandpa. He used to drive race cars. And my dad, he ran a race car a few times. My grandpa's name is Roger, and my dad's name is Rusty, so we just had to find another R name, and apparently we found one. Oh, that's a lot cooler than my R name. My R name is Rodney, so race is a lot cooler than Rodney. So at what age did you start racing? I started racing quarter midgets when I was five, and um, back then it was a really tough time, and I weren't and i've learned since then that the younger you are the tougher it's going to be but as you get older with more experience it's actually a lot easier to be able to focus on that yeah that's ca that's called seat time and that won't change until you get like 30. so the more seat time you got the more experiences that you have and it, and it prepares you to be prepared for the unexpected. So what, cute, what quarter midget association club do you call home? Um, Capital Quarter Midget Association um, in Lansing, Michigan. Lansing, Michigan. So you guys have had a pretty rough winter up there. I know I've got some other drivers that are in that area up there and it seemed like every time I turned around it was like, oh my gosh, it's snowing again. So um, you think winter's kind of moved away now and you guys can get started back focusing on your home track and racing on a, on a weekly basis? Yeah, hopefully it doesn't have any more bad weather that we've been getting. We've been getting a lot of rain. And the last race that we did, we actually got rained out. We got through the heat, so we got through one feature. Oh, and man. then it got rained That's a bummer. You get all psyched up, you're ready to go, waiting all weekend, and then you're just like, oh my gosh, it's gonna rain. So you know what the cool thing was is, um, I have a racer up there, his name's Joe Valento. I don't know if you know Joe or not, but, but in the summertime, or the wintertime this winter, I saw they put spikes on their tires. They actually ran the quarter midgets on ice. I thought that was pretty awesome. I've never heard of that, you but that have. actually sounds cool. that, Doesn't that sound fun? You talk about sliding through the corners, that that's, brings a whole new meaning to that. So what is your favorite track to race at? My favorite track to race at is Little Kalamazoo and Cal in Kalamazoo, Michigan, right by the big track. And so why, I, I ask a lot of young quarter midget drivers that question, and I get a lot of responses of that track. What makes that track so cool to run on? The banking, it just puts a lot of speed in the track, and it's fun to run fast. Yeah, so now do you race both on dirt and asphalt, or are you just on? We specifically focus on asphalt, We've only raced once under, and that was last year at um, Eldora. All right. Well, if you're going to go race on dirt, Eldora is a great place to be. That's like, that's like hollow, legendary ground there. So I understand that you've received an award from the Michigan Auto Racing Fan Club, and you have one of your cars on display at the Auburn Car Museum alongside two cars driven by your grandpa, Roger Bible. Yep, that is correct. Now, I don't know of any other young racers that's got anything like that. That's got to be pretty cool. So tell us a little bit about 
um, your grandfather. Was, um, does he, is your grandfather still living? Um, yeah, he's still living. Um, he actually comes to every, every race practically on, when I race on the weekends. Um, he used to run sprint cars and modifieds. And the two cars that are in the museum are both modifieds. I, he built all of his cars. He built them all. He didn't buy them all from factories. Right. They were all made. And one of the cars that was that is in the museum, it used to be the Pink Panther. It used to be pink, and then um, it we they painted it gold, and then it got in a fire in a barn fire, and now it's blue. Now it's blue. <laughs> all right. So I, I want to ask you something about a track before we get into our little um, segment that we do here called Get to Know Race in 60 Seconds. But I, I, I think I saw some pictures of you with your quarter midget at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Was you a part of that? Yes, I was. Um, they have this race in the parking lot. We call it the Brickyard. And every year, the kids that race there get to do a lap around the big track in their quarter midgets. Now, how cool! How cool was that? It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I would think I, you can even see you got a big smile on your face when you said that. That would have to be pretty cool. Can you imagine going 230 miles an hour on that track in an Indy car? No. I. I but <laughs> in the quarter midgets, it felt fast, but. I'm just imagining in a NASCAR or an Indy car that has to feel a hundred times faster than those. Absolutely. So let me ask you something. Did you get down and kiss the bricks? No, I didn't. You didn't kiss the bricks. All right. All right. Now we're going to go to a segment that we call Get to Know Race in 60 Seconds. Are you ready to play? Yeah, I am. All right. What's your favorite food? Shrimp. Favorite video game? Farming Simulator 18. Favorite TV show? NASCAR. Favorite color? Blue. Favorite superhero? Spider-Man. Favorite racing series? NASCAR Monster Energy Series. All right, who's your favorite race car driver? Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, do you have a pet? Um, I have a bulldog and a golden retriever. A bulldog and a golden retriever. And what are their names? Um, the bulldog is named Chowder, and the golden retriever is named Milo. All right. Well, I know one thing. If I come to Michigan, I'm going to come hang out with you because I know we're going to go. We're going to watch NASCAR, and we're going to eat shrimp. Those are two things at top of my table too. So give us a quick rundown of your quarter midget racing career as of to date. I know that in 2014. You were the Capital Club um, Most Improved Driver. In 2015, you were the Sunday Race Club Junior Honda Champion. And also in 2015, you were the National Junior Honda um, in, in the USAC. And then in 2016, Midwest Indoor Junior Honda and Junior Animal Champion. And then 2016, the Sunday Club Series Junior Honda and Junior Animal Champion. And then last but not least, again in 2016 for that year, the Saturday Night Thunder Junior Honda and Animal Champion. 2017, Saturday Night Thunder Senior, Senior Honda and Animal Champion. And Sunday Club Senior Honda and Animal Champion. And then you also, uh, in the Midwest Thunder Series, took second place overall in the mods. That's a pretty stout resume. How did you pull all of that off, man? I mean, you were you were dominant. Yes, experience. I've had a lot of track time. I've been around racing for practically practically my whole life, and just a lot of track time. So, so let me ask you a question. Does Grandpa and Dad work on your cars for you? Yeah. Okay, so that's got to be a lot of help to have people um, that have been there, done that. So. Do you find it um, that you can get out of the car and actually tell them what the car is doing? And because of their experience, they, they pretty much know exactly where to go and how to fix it. 
Yeah, I feel like if something's wrong with the car, I don't have to hide it and say, yeah, it's okay. You don't have to change anything to it. I, I feel like I've got one of the best pit crews in quarter midgets and I'm just proud of them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That that's you, you want to keep pushing them as much as you can because you know what? That's um, a lot of a lot of young drivers don't understand that being able to talk and communicate to the crew chief is what's going to propel you in your racing career. So let me ask you another question here. Um, do you work on the car yourself? Um, every once in a while I will, but usually the thing that I do at the racetrack would be drive the race cars. And funny story, my dad actually calls me the monkey behind the wheel. <laughs> All right. So what was it like to win your first race? The first time that you took that checkered flag and you got to get that flag and got to make that lap around the racetrack. What was that like? It was very emotional because I bet, I believe it took me a year to get that win. And my dad was really emotional. My mom was, my entire family was. Yeah, I can only imagine because, you know, a lot of people don't understand that you know, like if you win on a baseball team, there's nine people that win, or maybe 12 or 15. But to win a race, there's only one winner. It could be 25, 26, it could be 30 cars. That's it. There's only one winner. So what was your most memorable race? My most memorable race was when I came in second at our home track national in junior Honda. And you finished where? Second. Second. Now, now see, that's a great, that's a great answer because most, most young racers would say, oh, it was a race that I won. But you understand the importance of that race and probably how tough the competition was. And coming in second, that's what we call having an awesome performance when you're in that big arena. And sometimes the performance outweighs the results. Yeah, and we, there was a bunch of top drivers that were racing longer than me. I remember there was a kid in there. He, will, he had a faster car than me, but I think three laps left, he spun out right in front of me. And so he had to be sent to the back and that's what gave me my second place. Awesome, man. So that's all about patience, being patient. I bet you hear that a lot from your grandpa and your dad, patience. That says a lot. Um, when you get the chance to pass on, take it. That's right, take it. But don't try to force it because when you try to force it, that's when you make mistakes. And sometimes it's a, it's a little bit better just to wait than it is to try to force something, spin out and end up having to go to the back of the pack or force something and spin somebody else out and then get that name that you're not a clean racer. So, um, yeah. And I know that it takes a lot of sacrifices to be a young race car driver. So just tell me a few of the sacrifices that you've had to make to pursue your racing career. Some of the sacrifices that I had to make are going to my friend's birthday parties, doing wrestling, doing other hobbies, and just overall playing with my little brother. Okay. And I believe most of them were worth it. Yeah, that was the, my next question was going to be to ask you if, if it was worth it, and you, you just answered that right up front. So what do yeah. your what do all of your friends think about you being a race car driver? My friends think it's pretty cool. Sometimes they tease me about it because it's not a regular hobby for a kid to do. But I don't care. I like racing, and they like how I race. Yeah, so... so the big question, I always ask this when I talk to drivers and they're about their friends. So if you had a bunch of your friends come over to the track or come over to your house and let's say I was one of them and I'm like, race, man, dude, let me drive your race car. Are you going to let me? Probably. Probably. Good answer. Most of the time I get probably maybe from the driver and then the, the pit crew's like, no way. Absolutely no way. Because you know what? It looks a lot easier than it is, doesn't it? Yeah. It takes a lot of practice. It's not, it's not easy if it's your first time in the car to just flat foot it and win the race immediately. It takes time and it takes patience. 
That's right. So who are your biggest supporters, even though I think I know the answer to this? My biggest supporters are my mom, my dad, my entire family. And I think the biggest is my own grandpa. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So let's talk about the rest of your 2018 racing year. Uh, what kind of plans do you have coming up for, for later in the year? Um, my plans are for the Midwest Thunder. We actually have a Midwest Thunder next weekend at Nacoche. And my plans are to run Senior Honda, Senior Animal, Light 160, and Light World Formula. Wow, four cars. That keeps that. And I ran four cars last year, too. Wow, that keeps everybody on their toes. So let me, let me ask you this. Let's go back to one of your supporters. You said that was your mom. I've been to a lot of quarter midget races, and it seems like that person that really has everything in control is always mom. She's the one letting you know when the next race is up, where you're supposed to be, what time you're supposed to be. Is your mom just like that? Um, a lot of the times, but I think mostly she's my biggest supporter because she's always trying to get there watching me. Last weekend, she was in Chicago and she made it back for my feature and she was cheering me out and she'd even go to change. All right, that's cool. So what are your long-term racing goals? Where do you, what do you want to race in? I want to at least run sprint cars or mini sprints. If I'm able to go higher than that, NASCAR or Indy cars. NASCAR or Indy cars. But if you had to choose one or the other, if you had to choose, I'm going to be a NASCAR driver <clears throat> or am I going to be an Indy car driver, which one are you going to choose? NASCAR. Good, good answer. Because the paths to get there are a lot different, aren't they? Yeah. So from quarter midgets, you can go into, you know, you can go into the legend cars and then you can go into, you know, get some model or some uh, late model racing and then, you know, maybe K&N &N and ARCA and, and just step yourself up that ladder. So, um, so I guess you've already answered that question. You've got your sights set on the NASCAR series. And um, I think that's, uh, I think you got to have goals. Don't ever let anybody tell you any differently. The only way you're going to reach your goals is to have them, right? Yep. Yep. You got a lot of, you know, you got a good, a good role model to go after having Jimmy Johnson be your favorite driver. So let's take race off the track. What does race do when he's not racing? Um, I love to scout out new places. I like to travel. I love to play with my brother and my pets and just have fun. All right. So tell us something that most people would not know about you. Most people, do, the most, most people do not know that I like to try new foods. You'd like to try new foods. So I told you, you and I could hang out, man. I like to try new foods too. Can't you tell how skinny I am? All right, so before we wrap up the call, do you want to talk about any of your sponsors? Um, my sponsors are Honeydew Construction, RB Excavating, John McCroy, he does our hind joints, and then Mitchell T, he paints our race cars. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question, I'm going to ask you a question that I've never asked anybody before. Let's say that it's 10 years from now and you're driving in NASCAR. What would be your perfect sponsor? Who would you love to be on the car? Lowe's. You would like for Lowe's to be on the car. So you're going to bring them back into NASCAR, huh? Because they're getting ready to leave. That would be pretty cool. I have a lot of kids, a lot of people would say, like, I'd like to have McDonald's on there or Taco Bell or something like that. But Lowe's has been a good, solid sponsor for NASCAR. So do you have a website? Um. No, we don't, but we have a Facebook page, Bible Family Racing. Okay, so Bible Family Racing is your, is your Facebook page. Well, Race, I want to thank you for being with us tonight on our show. Um, I wish you all the luck, and uh, I'm going to ask you, if you win one of the Grands or one of the big nat national races this year, if I call you back up, will you come back and do another interview with us? Yeah, totally. All right, well, Race, thank you for being with us, and there you've got it. 10-year-old race Bible from Hastings, Michigan, a quarter midget driver, 
one of the up and coming drivers. We believe he's going to be on that list of who's next. So I want to thank all of you for being with us and we'll see you back here next week to find out who's next. Thank you.